Hello students, welcome to Unique Academy's YouTube channel. In this series of lectures, which we call in-depth, today we are going to discuss about the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. So when we talk about the foreign contributions, the first thing that we are going to learn today is what the news is all about. That is why we are discussing it. And we will be discussing about the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act and certain provisions of it. From exam point of view also, this act is very important because every now and then it is always, it is in the news. Maybe for some people being investigated for the violation of FCRA norms, some people uh, may be considered or they have even been put behind the bars considering that they have violated this act and all those things. But overall, when we talk, so it is going to be there in the news uh, every now and then. So let's try to understand it. But when we talk about the foreign contributions, see India as a country, it receives a lot of funds from other parts of the world also. It may be in the form of donations. It may be in the form of funding to the NGOs to do the developmental works. So it has played a very significant role in developmental process of India. Developmental, which, developmental process which reach out to the uh, lowest levels, for example, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has worked significantly in the open defection free. But before, uh, there were other important uh, non-governmental organizations in India before. Now they have shut down their offices, but yes, they were there like Amnesty was there, Greenpeace was there. So there was one kind of thing that, okay, we need to regulate the Foreign Contributions Regulation Act. They were regulated since very long time, but now they have more in news because the government has become very stricter regarding the, uh, the regarding this particular act. So there is a, some people pro, some against uh, this provision. Some say that this is hampering the developmental works and all those things. So every now and then this is in news. And the government is specifically wants to regulate these foreign contributions, whichever form it may be, because they, according to government, uh, these foreign contributions can be utilized against the anti-India activities like sponsoring the protest or creating a uh, uh, creating a people's pressure or uh, pressure groups for deciding on the government policies or impacting the government policies so for that thing they want to be regulated now here when we are talking about the foreign contributions as such and this particular act the news that appeared uh, recently was that uh, the foreign contribution regulation act has been amended by the union ministry of home affairs to include few relaxations so Yes, this act has become very rigid. It is, uh, it is very significant regulations have been brought about regarding the foreign contributions and all those things, which we will see as we move ahead. But the important point over here is that few relaxation have been provided. And because of these relaxations, this was in there in the news. Now, what are the relaxations? Let's first see that. And that will be important from the prelims point of view also. So this is like an amendment to this particular act. So we have to see what the amendment is there. Now, the first thing that has been brought about the new regulations permitted family members to transmit money to India for rupees 10 lakh uh, without telling the government. So see, earlier, if a family member had to transfer a money to uh, money in India, uh, there was a limit of 1 lakh. So above 1 lakh, you required the government permissions and uh, regulations were applied into that. But now what government has done from 1 lakh, it has changed to the 10 lakhs so that is the one important thing now this is being applied to the family members so family members with new amendments without a regulations they can transfer the amount in the sum of 10 lakhs so this is one of the important amendments that has been brought into now uh, again there were certain other restrictions also which you will see so i hope you have you will remember this first point 1 lakh to 10 lakh for family members now this prior to this change people had 30 days to notify the government if the sum limit was exceeded so if before uh, earlier if you were sending more amounts so you had to notify the government that we had sent this amount of money and you had you were getting 30 days now uh, this provision also has been relaxed. Uh, so over here, when we talk about uh, what will happen, so it will provide organizations additional time to alert government that the bank accounts have been opened for purpose of using funds obtained under the registration of prior approval category. So whichever these funds, they were requiring the prior approval registrations and all those things. So earlier 30 days was the provision. Now it has been relaxed. So banks and or the organizations or even the members, they will have significant amount of time to alert the government. Now again, understand if uh, governments will always try to regulate the foreign fundings because there will always a fear like, okay, this, and if you're funding certain organizations, then they can misuse these funds and uh, anti-India activities and all those things will be carried out. So they will be regulated. The point is they will be regulated. But to what extent? That is the question. Now, when we are discussing this here, it is a good thing that there is certain kind of relaxations over here. Now, the need that an organization or person disclose their foreign contributions on their official website every three months has been repealed. So earlier, uh, whenever foreign contributions were given, 
to an organization or a person uh, whenever they, you had to disclose that foreign contributions every three months on the official website of the uh, this particular act. So this has been repealed. So now every three months you don't need to tell the government that okay or update the government about the foreign contribution. So this is another significant relaxation. So overall we can say uh, this act FCRA act has been to a certain extent relaxed by the government in the recent times. Now when we talk ahead, uh, so this is just basically a news 1 lakh to 10 lakh, 30 days limit is not there, time has been extended and uh, 3 months uh, uh, update on the foreign contributions, they all have been repaired. So overall the relaxation has been provided by the government. Now if we move ahead and if we see the most important point as to these were the changes but what this act is all about. So uh, this act, when we talk about this act, this is an Indian Parliament's act. So this is Union Government has passed this act. And this act was passed in 2010 itself. So when we talk about 2010, in that year itself, the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act was passed. Again, I'm telling you the same thing that uh, every now and then there will be a regulations on the foreign contributions. That has been a very uh, integral part of whatever we have been looking into India. Now the act, what does this act do? The act regulates the foreign contribution by individuals. So foreign contribution by the individuals will be regulated or association or companies. So even individuals can give the foreign fundings. Some Apart from some individuals, there may be some companies, there may be some organizations which also used to provide the fundings. That may be for various works. Like for example, uh, there are some international, there used to be and there are even today some international NGOs like for example, Amnesty International. Now Amnesty International will require funds to operate. They will have their administrative uh, expenses. They will have to pay the salaries if certain reports have to be published. They will need the money. So Amnesty was there, Greenpeace was there. Now they are not there in India because they have been regulated and they are not complying with the FCRA. So government had banned them. But NGOs are there, certain uh, NGOs directly do the work. For example, there's a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which has done a significant work for open defection and female hygiene and all these work. So they may have their direct offices. So all these, they will receive the money because money is required to do any developmental kind of work. So that money which we are talking about will be transferred. Uh, from other sources or it can even include like uh, there are also points like donations are there India receives a lot of donations donations from the countries like England they are they comprise a significant proportion there are donations from the countries like Japan are there so donations may be there they may be for certain developmental work administrative work all those things so this all the money which is coming into India again the money uh, which is coming here to the individuals organizations or the associations don't confuse this money with the uh, foreign direct investment or FFIs and all those things. That, that is different. That is from the economics point of view. This is from the polities point of view and the developmental processes and all those things. So here the money is being sent. That money needs to be regulated. So that is the basic objective of this FCR Act. What is it? To regulate the flow of money into India, which is going to be utilized or which is going, which is being transferred to individuals or the associations. So that regulation, now government wants to know who is sponsoring some things. Uh, so that is very logical. It's not something which we are going to criticize, but yes. Now the Union Minister of Home Affairs introduced the Foreign Contributions Amendment Bill in 2020. So now why it is lot in news as we started, some people have even been arrested. Uh, some people have, some organizations have been uh, questioned. Uh, some even NGOs have shut down their offices in India. Uh, this was specifically after the foreign uh, and a uh, lot of criticism also happened about these amendments that were brought into in 2020. But these amendments have been a significant part and there can be a direct question regarding uh, this particular uh, section. So uh, overall, majority of the people who are working in the developmental process works and all those things, they think that these regulations are uh, more or less stricter. But then government has its own logics and government has its own objectives for regulating that. So we are not going to criticize that. What we are going to do is we are going to study what the provisions are there in this particular that has become a more contentious issue. But they do exist. So that is remember. So now uh, what are the significant provisions that have been brought by this FCRA Act of 2020? The first is prohibition to accept foreign contributions. Now this particular provision uh, restricts the people, uh, restricts the people who are in public life to receive the foreign fundings. Now, when we talk about the people in the public life, they may involve the politicians, journalists, 
then they may involve civil servants. So these are the categories or there are other categories also a lot of categories but people who generally are in the public uh, services politicians and civil servants and journalists and all and their associations also so when we talk about associations so political parties or the journalist house and all those things they are not allowed to receive the foreign funding so they cannot receive the foreign funding so that is one important point so earlier cases there you have certain relaxations but now this act strictly mandates that the foreign contributions cannot be regulated by uh, such organizations like political parties they also are not allowed to receive the foreign contributions the civil servants are not allowed to receive the foreign servants or even some other uh, individuals uh, they, there is a stricter prohibition they got, the act has clearly notified who cannot accept the um, a prohibition uh, accept the contribution so here uh, there are certain associations also and there are certain or uh, certain individuals who are restricted from accepting the foreign contributions now this is because if you are in public like simply then your public life and whatever work you do it should not be sponsored by someone so like if you say a political party is being funded by some other country so that political party will always be in that notion that we are funded from another country and they may work for anti-india activities so this is what the logic of the government is so they have strictly regulated or prohibited from the, these entities to receive the foreign contributions now next is transfer of foreign contributions now this particular provision like let's say you receive some hundred rupees as a foreign contribution now earlier you could transfer some portion of it uh, to whoever you want or families and or other organizations and all those things so this has not allowed now so whatever the contribution that you receive you cannot transfer it to anyone so that another prohibition has been brought in. So it is a prohibition. Then another important point, Aadhaar has been made mandatory. So Aadhaar card is now mandatory to uh, receive the foreign contribution. So you have to give your Aadhaar card whenever you will be opening. Now here associations are not having Aadhaar cards, it's for individuals. So uh, individuals associated with that organization or that association will have to give their Aadhaar cards. And these are the registration of Aadhaar cards is mandatory. Now that uh, again, you can see that is like again, keeping a check as to who are the people who are involved into this receiving of the monies or the foreign contributions. Then there is one important point, FCRA account. Now these all points have also been criticized. So one of major one was like Aadhaar for registration. This has been criticized because people consider it to be violation of privacy and all those things but it is mandatory for receiving the fcra then fcra account also has been criticized but we will try to understand what it is all about fcra account states that like you should be opening only one account okay one account to receive these fundings and it should be in the sbi delhi remember that so it should be only one account all over the india you should be opening to receive the foreign contributions and it should be in the SBI, that is State Bank of India, located in Delhi. So now that is another important point. So these two points, if you say significantly, they contribute a lot to uh, people who are against this and uh, or people who have criticized this act uh, as such. Now then, uh, renewal of the licenses is required. So after every time you need to renew your licenses, if you have to operate as an NGO or any other associations, uh, generally there are NGOs only, pressure groups are there. If you are working and if you are receiving the foreign contributions, then you have to renew your licenses and the suspension of registration. So if you are not while if you are not following the FCRA norms and all those things, then the government, then government can suspend the registrations. So these are the important provisions. So important if you say four of this, have played a very significant role in criticism now if we talk about the criticism as to what is the criticism then people think uh, that okay uh, what is the point they 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 think that this is going to hamper the developmental work work and there is also one important provision in this foreign contribution regulation act as to why it will hamper the developmental work and the incomes of the social workers this is going to hamper but why it is going to hamper because for every ngo they will require certain money for the administrative purposes right so this act makes it mandatory or makes it a regulation that whatever the money you are receiving you cannot spend more than 20 percent of the money for the administrative expenses understand if you are receiving 
100 rupees you cannot spend more than 20 rupees on the administrative expenses the number was the percentage was higher in the earlier cases but 20 percent people are thinking that okay if 20 percent is there out of this 20 percent you have to give the salaries and all those things obviously your salaries will be reduced no devil uh things will not come and because of this all these provisions the people working in this non-governmental organizations and all those things they think that okay receiving the funds has become very tedious so if you are if the process of receiving the funds is that tedious then the developmental work cannot be carried to that extent so they because of this developmental work and the impact on the ngos and all those things uh, there is a point of or we can say even they are the cons of this particular amendment but overall this amendment is going to be there so we have to prepare that but these points you need to remember they are very simple uh, simple and technical ones but do we require developmental uh, do we require foreign contributions you have to keep an approach that yes we will need the foreign contributions because see if you receive the money for a good work no one is going to uh, go against you but at the same time do we require regulations yes we do require the regulations so when you write an answer you have to balance both the things one uh, the developmental work should not be hampered you can analyze these points and then you have to also state that uh, uh, regulations are also needed but excessive regulations can hamper the development of work that points also you need to be write it down so this was a small topic of foreign contributions regulation act and the amendment that has been recently brought and because of that it was in news and that is what we are discussing here today so i hope you have understood whatever we have discussed in this particular brief session with that see you in another session thank you Subscribe the Unique Academy's YouTube channel and press the bell icon for latest updates and videos.